Hi, I want to talk to you today about how I was able to move to a different country and the things that I had to consider beforehand before coming over here. Uh, this video was requested by someone who wants to move overseas. I live in Israel, they want to live in Europe. Um, I think it's pretty much the same difference, you know, moving. A little language barrier, but it's pretty much the same difference. Uh, one thing you, you definitely want to know is the currency there. What are things costing? Um, when you go places like tourist traps, people are going to try to take uh, advantage of you. They're going to try to take your money. Um, they're going to try to rip you off because of your ignorance of the currency. Um, you want to know how much a taxi should cost. Uh, I know here they can give you different rates depending on where you want to go and which way you're going, whoever you talk to. Um, usually you'll always want them to use the meter. Don't let them give you a price. Say like it's $50 to go this far. Always use the meter when you are a tourist uh, and when you're first starting to you know, live there. Um, I have had people give me incorrect change back because they didn't think that I knew how to count in this currency. Um, they tried to keep the equivalent of three dollars from me. Every single time I went to the store, every single time I bought something like a drink at a kiosk or something, um, they would try to take, you know, about three dollars from me. This adds up from tourists, okay? You really need to know the currency of the place that you live in. Also, you want to know the exchange rate of the money. Uh, how much are things costing in that country, uh, sterling, whatever you're buying something in? I, I actually don't know too many currencies. We buy things in shekels here. For us, one US dollar is four shekels for us. On average, it changes every single day how much the currency exchange rate is. Okay, so when I go into a store and I see something that costs five shekels, I automatically know that that is a dollar twenty-five in U.S. money. Would I spend a dollar twenty-five in U.S. money in the states for that same item, or, you know, is that way too much to pay for like a little piece of gum? You know, so you have to you have to understand the currency exchange rate and you have to understand how to count the money. A lot of um, European places now have like the plastic coated money. I believe Canada even has the plastic coated money now. America wants to move over to that but I don't think they have yet. Um, there are no no such thing as pennies here. We go by basically 10 agro which is probably um, I don't know the exchange for that. <laughs> but we go by tens here. So if something is five dollars and one agarot, which they do, uh, you don't get 99 agarot back. Okay, so you need to understand how your money works and not get ripped off that way. Uh, we go by 10 agarots at a time. So um, you may get 90 agarot back or they may take that one you know, aggro off and you may get a whole dollar back or a whole, a whole shekel back. Um, that's very confusing, but I know, I know how to count. Uh, within the first week, I had been going to a lot of places as a tourist and, you know, just visiting and shopping at the little shops, mom and pop shops. Uh, you will also have to find out a good neighborhood, if you're moving there, you will have to research good neighborhoods. Just like in the States, there's going to be very good neighborhoods and there's going to be very bad neighborhoods. You want to research what schools are there around you, uh, what community centers, what groups, uh, you know, so you can join in some kind of group activities, um, classes exercise groups. We have things like this here that we can sign up for in every single town. This town is a little limited because it's a, a, a tourist town, but in the town that we used to live in, uh, predominantly Russian, uh, it had a, a bunch of, you know, little classes that you could take, um, exercise, dance, uh, you can learn pottery, things like that. You want to look for a community center 
near your home. You also need to know the, the etiquette of people. Um, coming from, you know, I lived in the country my whole life and then coming to Israel, uh, table manners are a big deal here. In the States where I lived, table manners, what's that? You know, you eat ribs with your fingers, you have barbecue sauce all over your mouth. That would never fly here, you know? So you have to know, like, what is appropriate for that country that you're fixing to go to. Um, you, don't, you don't want to make yourself look like a, a heathen, I guess, <laughs> you know? You wanna see what is acceptable for that country and how they do things. Another thing is the food is going to be completely different. Um, here, we do not have any drive throughs so you cannot go get fast food just down the street. No drive throughs at all. Um, and it's actually taboo to get fast food here. People do look down on it. Uh, it's okay, you go once in a while and you get like McDonald's or something. We do have McDonald's here, we don't have Burger King. Um, but it's okay to get you know that once in a while. We don't have dollar menus here, so if you are addicted to going out to eat, you know, at fast food restaurants, um, you're going to have to get addicted to something else because a meal that would cost you $5 at McDonald's in the States costs $15 here, and it's not made how you would think it would be. <laughs> uh, their, their sandwiches are different and there's no cheese on them because it's kosher, depending on where you're moving to. Um, you also want to know what kind of stores are going to be available to you. Here, we don't even have yard sales or thrift stores, okay? So we have to buy everything new. Our dollar stores are really like $5 stores here. Um, and they sell things from China but it's not the China you remember. It's not the good China, you know, where they make higher quality things for cheap. It's the junk that they sell for hire. So you get a screwdriver, it'll snap in half, you know? So you have to, uh, you kind of have to find out what you can't get where you're moving. Um, there are no real home stores here. Uh, there are no decorating stores, you know, there's an Ikea, but it's like five hours away. So, um, yeah, you have to know where you're moving and you have to know what to bring with you. When I moved here, I brought eight suitcases with me. I wanted to bring things that would make me comfortable in my home. So I did bring area rugs with me, eight by 10 area rugs for the room um, because every room in here is tile. They don't know what wall-to-wall -wall carpeting is. So I knew that it would be a big, a big difference for me to not have carpeting. So I wanted to make myself comfortable. So I did bring three 8x10 rugs in my suitcases. And yes, they will roll up and fold into your suitcase. Uh, packing is a big deal when you're moving overseas. You do not want to ship your stuff unless you buy a big container, a storage container where they, you know, ship it over on the sea. Um, and those cost around $2,500. And sometimes you even have to share them. And sometimes they have to sit in like the, the dock and they have to inspect it. And that can take months. So don't expect like, to bring all of your furniture over and move it right into your apartment or your house right away. Um, it could take months to get it out. And there are a lot of fees that you have to worry about if you're going to go that route. You have to pay a lot of fees, you have to pay a lot of taxes. Some things are tax free, some things are not. And you most likely will only be allowed to bring like one coffee pot, one computer. Okay, so that's if you go. Um, overseas route. Uh, they don't want you to sell things, basically. They don't want you to bring things over to sell. So they, they like to charge you money for that. Okay, the most important 
and the cheapest way to get all of your stuff over is to pay the extra hundred the extra two hundred dollars per suitcase you get 50 pounds in that um, if you go over up to 70 pounds they charge you like fifty dollars more or a hundred dollars more depending on which airline you go through it is much cheaper to take one suitcase and fill it up to 70 pounds and pay two hundred dollars for it than it is to take 70 pounds and ship it you know um, overseas first of all they do not have um, on the sea transportation for your packages anymore what they do is airmail it everything so it is very expensive uh, here one pound is about well not even a pound my mom sent uh, some cables the other day for the TV cables you know this big uh, just USB plugins and it was $15 for an envelope so you do not want to ship anything um, the best advice I can give you is put all of your stuff in a suitcase and bring it over that way and you want you want everything in there that means the most to you that will make you the most comfortable on your stay there you want to bring extra underwear extra uh, bras if you're a woman uh, stuff that you're used to the the quality stuff you don't want to bring um, junk that you'll have to throw away in a year you want to bring everything with you that that you're gonna have for several years because you may not have the money to replace it um, getting a job getting a job in a different country first of all does your country speak English and if they don't speak English if that's not their first language like here it's like the third or fourth language um, yeah it's actually like the fourth language here there's not a whole lot of people that speak fluent English here I was lucky to find my husband that did but uh, if your country does not speak English they may have slang words that you are not used to hundreds of slang words I know a lot of places in Europe have slang words that I'm not used to and I would never ever be able to figure out what they're talking about um, I can't even think of any right now but if you need to look these things up before you go um, what what slang do they have if you're going to an English country um, or Australian country another thing you want to know speaking of Australia is what kind of poisonous animals and insects and you know things what kind of beasts do they have over there you want to prepare yourself for maybe going to bed with uh, scorpions every night you know um, Australia has like seven of the most deadliest snakes in the world that's why I'll never go there but New Zealand has no snakes at all so you need to find out what kind of animals are indigenous to that area what kind of poisonous things so you can look out for that and then finally just ask somebody who actually lives in that country about customs um, what's normal for people do you ride on a bus have you ever ridden on a bus before my mom took me one day to ride on a bus in the states because I had never ridden on a bus before public transportation it was a dollar and we went from point A to point B you know just so I could ride a bus um, she also took me on an elevator and an escalator because I'm a country girl I didn't I didn't do these things you want to experience these things before you get to your country if you you know things that are normal for everybody else you want to get a little bit of experience before you get there because you're gonna have culture shock immediately um, as soon as I get on the plane I'm gonna have culture shock going back to America as soon as I get on the plane there's English speakers on there because they're going back home you know from vacation so when I hear English everywhere I'm like well, cool you know these people speak my language usually when I go out because I'm in a foreign country and they don't speak English here usually when I go out all I hear is blah 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 in my ear all the time and I block it out but then you hear the like, people speaking English and it just it gives you culture shock so be be prepared for culture shock when I first came over here 
I came with half, um, half Orthodox Jewish people were on my plane, basically, because we stopped at uh, Newark, New Jersey, which is the place where you fill out all your duty papers, and that's where they, they check you out, basically. So I came over here with half Orthodox Jewish people that spoke Hebrew that, um, for me as a Westerner, were very rude. Um, they were loud. They, they were just rude. <laughs> <laughs> for a Westerner, you know, because I'm not used to their culture. I'm not used to how they have to live, you know. Um, so, yeah, things like that, you're really going to have to prepare ahead of time. I will tell you that most countries outside of the United States dislike Americans. That's just going to be a cold hard fact that you will realize really quickly. You don't want to advertise the fact that you're American. You don't want to advertise the fact that you're new. Um, when you go out, you have to have a confidence about you. You know what's going on. You're not going to get ripped off and you're not going to let somebody take advantage of you. They're going to want to. You're going to find people like that everywhere because humans are humans. There's good and there's bad in every single country. Don't ever think that because you're going to, you know, say Israel, which is like, that's where Jesus walked, that you're going to see people that are nice, you know. Um, that's another thing. Um, right now, there's been like a huge shift in European countries of religion. There are lots of Muslims in Europe now. Um, there are lots of Jewish people here now. They, they live by a different code, I guess. They live in a different way. You will have to get used to that if you're, if you're new to that and don't understand it. You might want to read up on it, study their customs, study what they do, so you know. So when you get there, you're not like, you know, or you don't do something wrong in front of them. Uh, like when I come over here, I learned that Orthodox Jewish men don't like women to look them in the eyes. Uh, they don't sit next to women on the plane, which I got a rude awakening one time when a man demanded to move away from me. And I was so, my, my heart just broke because I thought that, you know, he was moving away from me because I was big girl, you know. He wasn't. He's not allowed to sit next to me for his religion, for his culture. So you're going to have to understand different religions and cultures when you move that you're not used to, maybe. Um, I don't think I'd ever seen a Muslim before I moved to this country. And there are a lot of Muslims, a lot of Orthodox Jews, a lot of religious Jews, a lot of Messianic Jews, and Christians here. There's all kinds of religions. Um, there's all kinds of people that live here. I don't know where you're moving exactly, but you're gonna have to get used to people from all continents, from all countries, everywhere. My advice to you is just do a lot of research. Maybe try to meet somebody who lives in the country that you wanna live in, you know, cause they're gonna know a whole lot more about the place that you want to move than anyone else. You can't just go online and research a lot of these things. Talk to somebody who actually lives there. Um, get their opinion on things. Ask them, what is a really nice place to live? What is a place in this price range that I can afford? So my advice to you is just do your research and good luck. We do daily videos of our life here in Israel. If you enjoy that type of thing, please subscribe. Have a great day.